All right, this is fourth grade, module three, lesson 15. And in this lesson, students are gonna be uh, using and understanding the area model and the array model to describe and to uh, record their thinking for division problems, in particular, division problems that have a remainder. So when, remember that when we're dividing, oh, let me say, oh, let's do 26 divided by four. Okay, so let's do 26 divided by four. And then of course, 26 divided by four. Okay, so remember that when we're dividing, there's two ways to think of division. You could think of division as partitive. Oh, let me write that down, part partitive, I think that's how you spell it. And the other one is through measurement, all right? All right, those are the two techniques for thinking about uh, division. In this lesson, the way Eureka Math has us drawing our arrays or our area model, it really means we are using the measurement uh, away, approach to representing division. And what that means is, when we have 26 divided by four, what they want us to do in Eureka Math is they want us to show that each group has four dots. So one, two, three, four. Why, why four? Because it says so right here. So that means we've got four right here, and we're gonna keep going, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. All right, so now if we want to kind of show the arrays, that's right here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six columns with a remainder of two. So the answer is six with a remainder of two. Now, in the area model, the way Eureka wants us to show that is to represent it is to say, well, this is going to be a rectangle with a height of four. So do you see the connection between this and this? So it's a rectangle with a height of four. Now, what's the width of that rectangle? Well, that width of that rectangle is going to be six, and that uses 24 of our square units. And that means we're gonna have one, two left over on the outside. So this is how you represent it using an array. This is how you represent it using the area model. They're very similar. You can see they're very, very similar. Um, um, I should over here say that the answer here is six remainder two. Six remainder two because four is the height, so that means the width is the missing value, that's the missing factor when a, in a multiplication problem, right? Four times six is 24, plus two extras. So the answer is six remainder two. So we're gonna show 24 divided by four using an array, and then again using the area model. And so first thing we're gonna do, because that four right there, that says there's gonna be four in each column. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Ah, we are perfect right there. So that shows us that we have no remainder. So there is our array. So the answer, the quotient, is 6 because we have 6 groups. And what's the remainder? Well, the remainder is 0. So Back in the olden days, we would say six remainder zero, and that's still allowed. You can still write it like that. That's allowed. Now, what would that, what would that look like in the area model? Well, the area model is going to mean uh, it's going to have a height of four, one, two, three, four, and we're just going to keep going, and we're going to have six of these, a width of six. And the way I think of it is I say, well, we've got four here, plus another four is eight, plus another four is 12, and I'm just gonna keep skip counting by fours, much like this over here. And I'm just gonna keep skip counting until I get close to 24 without going over. Um, and so really, if I wanted to, I should put this 24 divided by four. And what is our answer? Well, the answer is 
6. So can you show 24 divided by 4 with one rectangle? Yep. And the answer is it's going to have a width of 6 units. Same concept, only now our first number is 25 instead of 24. So parents and teachers, your students might automatically be able to say, well, we're going to have a remainder of 1 because our previous problem used 24 dots and had no remainder. But let's do it anyway. So the fact that this says divide by 4 means each of our columns is going to have 4 dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, <laughs> 21, 22, 23, 24. I'm getting all messy. And then 25. All right, so now we can see that we've got one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, five, six groups. So we have a quotient of six with a remainder of one. So if we wanted to, we could say 25 divided by 4 is 6 with one remainder. Remember, teachers, we are using the measurement technique because we're saying there are we know exactly how big each group is. So the question is, how many groups are we going to have? So that means the measure, we are using the measurement technique as opposed to the partitive technique. The partitive technique would be... Uh, let's take that 25 and separate it into four equal-sized groups the best we could. In fact, let's do that. Let's show what that partitive technique would look like. So the partitive technique would say, well, if you've got 25 divided by 4, well, the partitive technique says, well, let's make four equal-sized groups. One, two, three, four. Now, let's count up to 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and we can't do an extra one, so that's one left over. So this is the partitive technique and what, what it would look like using the partitive technique. So parents and teachers, here's the big thing, is if you have a student using, let's see, the quotative technique, like Eureka Math is expecting, or the partitive technique down here, don't, don't freak out. You know, uh, we don't need one versus the other, although Eureka Math is going to be using the measurement technique. It, it appears as though they're using the measurement technique the most, but understand that there is another way to think of it, and we don't need to beat up our kids uh, emotionally or educationally if they prefer to think of the partitive technique. Just point them out. So how would, the, how would this look in the area model? Well, first thing is we know because the number, I'm going to put it up here, 25 divided by 4. Because we're dividing by 4, that means we know the height of our rectangle is going to be 4. And we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... That uses 24, and we have that one little uh, square unit left over. So that's what it would look like. So the question is, can we do this using one rectangle? Nope. And what would the answer be? Well, 25 divided by 4 is 6 with one little remainder. All right, now they're giving us less scaffolding. We're going to do... 44 divided by 7, we're going to do it using the array method and the area metal method. So because we're dividing by 7, that means we're going to have 7 in each column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're just going to keep going. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. All right, so now that I've got counted up to 44, because it says so right here, I have seven in each group because it says so right here, now we're going to figure out, well, how many groups do we have? How many columns? Well, we've got six again. It seems like all of my answers are six today. So what's our quotient? Our quotient is six 
What's our remainder? Our remainder is 2. Now, what is that going to look like with the area model? Well, we're going to have a height of 7 because it says so. Oops. 44 divided by 7. So this 7 says our height of our rectangle is going to be 7. And because we just did the array model, we know that the width of that rectangle is going to be 6. And that gives us 42 square units inside. And we know we have two little cubes left over. So this is how you would represent the area model. Notice I put in the 42 in here, but up here they did not write in the 24. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I prefer the 42. I like to point out how many square units we used already. All right, one more problem for good measure. So 37 means we're going to count up to 37. 6 means there's going to be 6 in each column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. So that tells us we now know that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 groups with 1 left over. So our answer is 6 remainder 1. So what would that look like with the area model? Well, that 37 divided by 6. That 6 tells us our rectangle is going to have a height of 6. And because we just did it over here, we know it's going to have a width of 6. That means we've used up 36 square units, and we're going to have one little square unit left over. So the answer is 6 remainder 1. And that wraps up 4th grade, Module 3, Lesson 15, where we're using the array and area models to represent division problems with a remainder.